Uh, welcome, Alma Guillermo Prieto. Uh, there's been much that's written and commented about, about the death of Hugo Chavez, with a bit of perspective, now that the funeral has taken place. Uh, how do you think his death impacts Latin America more broadly? Uh, Latin America more broadly, let me think about that. Well, I think, you know, that may be uh, where his most enduring impact is. He did form a coalition, a Latin American independent coalition, uh, that looked south, and that was what he wanted to call it, too. Uh, it didn't look so much north to Central America and certainly north to Mexico, but it did look south to the South American continent, and it was a very strong and independent union, um, which had no influence from the United States at all. And uh, so this was a, a great change, uh, and I think a major step forward in his goal of achieving full independence from, uh, of Latin America from the United States. Uh, do, do you think, uh, that is, uh, we've, we've had several opinion pieces that have appeared from President Lula of Brazil, from Dilma Rousseff, all pre current president of Brazil, that were quite favorable about Chavez. Uh, what do you think accounts for that? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I wouldn't presume to speak for them. They have voiced their opinions and they have made many strong points about um, Chavez. I have a different opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I have a different opinion of his inheritance. Um, but I really wouldn't pretend to explain their point of view. I'd, I'd much rather explain my point of view. Well, why don't you explain your point of view? We read your uh, uh, blog in the New York Review of Books, uh, and it raised some fascinating points. So why don't you express your point of view? Well, I think, as you say, now that the funeral has ended, now that uh, Venezuelans are coming to terms with the fact that Hugo Chavez really is no longer uh, with us, not no longer in this world. Um, it is time to judge his inheritance as a politician. Um, and it, it's a question of what endures. After somebody is dead, what endures? Um, and so I try to measure that against my own idea of what a positive political inheritance might be. Um, I'd say that a positive political inheritance for a country like Venezuela would be a stable country, a politically stable country, without ferocious divisions, um, with a, a, a legitimate opposition that feels that it's able to compete for power on a level playing field and with clear rules of the game. Um, I think that's important not only because it's a nice thing to do, let's say, but because when you have a politically divided country with an opposition that feels bitter or embattled or marginalized or, or tricked, that opposition is likely to become militant or violent. Um, and then you have a conflict in a country with a series of very new institutions which were created by the Hugo Chavez and, and the regime, uh, which means because they're new that they're inherently unstable starting with the Constitution, which is very new. Um, and in that gap that's left in a divided country, it's very tempting for the military to step in. Mm -hmm. Latin America has a long and bitter experience with that particular phenomenon. Uh, you only have to look at Argentina in the aftermath of Perón, and then from the 60s onward, the series of uh, unfortunate military dictatorships. The Venezuelan military, when hears, is split between a, a very pro-Chavez faction and a faction that is not so enthusiastically pro-Chavez, just like the rest of the country. Uh, so I think that's difficult. I, I, I'd add one more point, which is that Hugo Chavez never won an election with more than 65% of the popular vote. And that's a very high percentage. It's not as high as Lula in Brazil, 
it's not as high as Alvar Uribe in Colombia, a neighbor in Colombia, uh, who maintained a popularity of about 80% throughout their two or three uh, terms, but it's still a very high percentage. However, what it means is that 35% of the electorate did not vote for Hugo Chavez. And I think it's important for that 35% uh, were certainly not all oligarchy, you know, if there were 35% oligarchy in Venezuela, it would be a very different country. It does mean that there is a significant percentage of the electorate in all social classes that did not feel represented by Hugo Chavez and that should feel that it has a chance to be represented and to speak out uh, without fear of ridicule or losing their jobs, which we know systematically took place, um, or, or being marginalized from political life. Alma, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. Well, on the contrary, I'm very happy to be back and speaking with you. Uh, I feel like I'm back in the center. Great.